Okay, um, sorry for the long, uh, pause, I guess. Um, but anyway, today we are going to be talking about the Riemann integral, um, which is really the first non-trivial, or I guess, uh, not non-trivial, um, really the first taste of analysis. Um, leading up to this point, right, we have um, defined real numbers and then studied their topology, right? This is um, sort of the first thing that's going to distinguish, um, I guess, analysis from topology. So we're going to start off with a definition. That is a partition P of a closed interval A to B um, is a list um, uh, is a list X zero up to xn, where we start at a, and then we have a strictly increasing sequence leading up to b. OK. Um, the what we call the mesh of P is denoted with these like double absolute value bars is going to be the max um, the maximum value of x sub i minus x sub i minus one. Right. So there's finitely many of these values, so we can take a maximum. Um, okay, then um, evaluations are points in each of the intervals um, of our partition, right? So we go from one point in the partition to the next, and we choose some value. And with these uh, data, um, although we don't really need the mesh for this, but we call P of F and the evaluation points. We are going to define this to be the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f evaluated at the evaluation points times um, delta xi. And delta xi is going to stand for uh, this quantity here. Um, and this is called a Riemann sum. So it's a Riemann sum of f with respect to the partition p and the choice of evaluation points. All right. So the next thing is now we are going to define the Riemann integral. So um, let f be a function It need not be continuous, um, just a function on A to B, mapping into the real numbers. And we say that the Riemann integral from A to B of f of x dx exists and equals L if for all 
epsilon greater than zero, there is a corresponding delta greater than zero, such that um, if P is a partition of mesh less than delta, then the Riemann sum of F with certain evaluations minus L is less than epsilon for all um, choices of evaluation points. So really all that matters is the mesh, right? We any um, any evaluation points we pick, it doesn't matter. We're still going to be within epsilon of the value L. Um, okay. And um, we say F is in. R, A, B, um, if and only if the integral from A to B of f of x dx exists, right? So what would it mean for the integral to not exist? It means that um, I pick an epsilon and um, I can't find a delta and I can't find an L and R such that um, these Riemann sums are going to be getting close to some value um, as the mesh gets smaller and smaller, essentially. Um, one way this can happen is um, if, say, changing your evaluation points drastically changes your value of the Riemann sum. Um, so one example of this is like a function which is 1 on the rationals and 0 on the irrationals. Um, your choice of evaluation points is going to drastically change um, your value. Um, so let's see an example, a very simple example, where f of x is equal to some constant in R. Then, um, regardless of evaluation points, right, the Riemann sum is going to be, right, C, right, because, well, I'll write it out here. Delta x, or sorry, delta x i. Right. But no matter what I choose for the evaluation points, f of x is just going to be c. And then I can pull c out of the sum, and I get the sum as i equals one to n of delta x i. And remember that the delta xi are these differences between the xi and the xi minus 1. So this is simply going to be um, xn minus x0, which is b minus a. And since the partition, since this Riemann sum is always going to be this value, right, this is um, this is um, this is constant with respect to choice of partition, with respect to um, right the mesh of the partition, with respect to like there's no epsilons or anything. Um, thus, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is c times b minus a. Okay. Um, so now we're going to prove a theorem. Theorem. 
let f be a Riemann integrable function on a on the interval a b. Then f is bounded. Right. Remember that bounded just means we can find two constant two real numbers such that um, f is always between those two real numbers. Okay. So let's just jump right into the proof. And we are going to do proof by contradiction. So suppose that f is Riemann integrable on the interval a, b, and f is not bounded. Um, so since f is in this, um, in the Riemann integrable space, right, we can assign some value to the Riemann integral, right, because it exists. So let L be the Riemann integral. And we're going to let simply epsilon be equal to 1. Okay. Um, then, then there is delta greater than zero, such that if p is a partition with mesh less than delta, then, um, right, we know that the Riemann sum, regardless of valuation, uh, minus L is going to be less than epsilon, which we've chosen to be 1, by, and then by the triangle inequality, um, we have that we can sort of move the L to the other side. Right. Um, we have that the Riemann sum, the absolute value of the Riemann sum, is less than the absolute value of L plus 1. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fix the partition P. Okay. And what we're going to do is um, sort of vary, we can vary our valuations. We know that um, that this inequality will hold regardless of what evaluation points we choose. So um, since f is, so the first step is to notice that if f is unbounded on a, B, then F is unbounded on some interval of our partition, right? So on some, right? It doesn't have to be unbounded on all of the intervals. It has to be bound, unbound, sorry. It doesn't have to be unbounded on all of them, um, but there has to be at least one where it's unbounded, right? Because if it was bounded on each of the intervals, then it would be bounded on the total interval as well. Um, then, right? Okay. Oh my god, that was awful. Um, okay, then our Riemann sum um, so we're going to write this out. Right? So this is a sum. So I goes from 1 to n. f of x. Uh, I guess this is i. Delta x. Oh, well, so, so i here, I'm reserving the i here for this interval where f is unbounded. Um, so I am going to use k for this sum. 
Okay, and we can use sort of the um, the reverse triangle inequality. I don't really know um, a proper name for it, but um, there is a sort of it's an immediate corollary of the triangle inequality that we can split this up um, such that this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of f evaluated at xi um, that is times delta xi and then minus the absolute value of the sort of the rest of the sum. So k not equal to i, f of xk delta xk. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, leave this alone. And since f is unbounded on, since f is unbounded on x sub i minus 1 to x sub i, then um, we can choose, um, we can choose our evaluation point in this interval. to make the absolute value of f at the evaluation point as large as we want. Thus, we can make the absolute value of our Riemann sum as large as we want. And this contradicts the inequality that um, that our Riemann sum is ultimately bounded by the absolute value of the Riemann integral and um, plus one, which was our value of epsilon. Um, because this doesn't change. Um, and so we can't possibly make this value as big as we want, right, because it's bounded. But um, so that's our contradiction. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to stop it there. And then next time we will discuss uh, some more theorems about Riemann integrable functions.